In the city of Navotas, there is an island district surrounded by water with a history cherished by each individual and a legacy passed on to each generation. A vibrant community united in love for its patrons, the Holy Cross of Jesus and St. Peter the Fisherman, promoting them in devotion and acts of service. A people called to be fishers of men. This is Tansa. This is the parish community of Santa Cruz. In the city of Navotas, there is an island district surrounded by water with a history cherished by each individual and a legacy passed on to each generation. A vibrant community united in love for its patrons, the Holy Cross of Jesus and St. Peter the Fisherman, promoting them in devotion and acts of service. A people called to be fishers of men. This is Tansa. This is the parish community of Santa Cruz. The district of Tansa is one of the two main islands which comprise the city of Navotas. 
It is believed that these islands were formed when the turbulent waters of Manila Bay eroded the one single peninsula and pierced through it, thus the name Nagabotas, or presently Navotas. While this was properly established, it was unclear where the name Tanza was derived. Some say that Tanza was a derivation of Tanza, who was perceived to be a wealthy Chinese merchant during the Spanish era. He was known for his expertise in making sugar out of raw materials. Sugar cane from nearby areas are brought to the area where Tanza lives, from which he extracted juice using a cabiao. He would then boil them to produce molasses, which is a byproduct of sugar. Tanza would then pack the sugar in earthen jars to be brought to Malabon and nearby areas to be sold. It became so popular that it was later known by the name Tanza Sugar. This would eventually be the name of the place where his area of expertise can be found. In the lot where the Malabon Sugar Factory once stood, excavations were done and there revealed fragments of Chinese plates dating back to the pre-colonial era, thus giving probability to this theory. From Tanza, one can reach the mainland of Navotas by means of a boat. On the other hand, a bridge connects the village to the nearby city of Malabon, where the people buy their basic commodities, do commerce and travel to their work. Like the rest of the Navotenos, most of the people here depended on the graces of the sea for their daily living. Fishing boats line the coast of Tanza, sailing and returning back with a bountiful harvest of fish and other seafood including shrimps, crabs, and others. What was once a vast and silent fish pond village is now a bustling and vibrant community divided into different areas. Gasak, which used to be the main area of commerce and local government. Tansakaliwa. Tamba. Merville Subdivision, Carville Homes, Beacon Area, and Chungkang. There is also in Tansa an area called Sitio Pulo, home to many endemic mangroves and sea creatures. It is a protected area because of its environmental importance. Recently, the socialized housing of the city government was established on the reclaimed area of the village. Due to the increased number of residents in Tansa, it was formally divided into two barangays, Tansa Uno and Tansa Dos, by virtue of Republic Act 10935 on August 23, 2017. Nevertheless, Tansa has always been what it was, a joyful and simple people, grateful for the blessings of the sea, and known for its unity and religious zeal. In fact, the longtime patron of the community, curiously odd, also came from the sea. From time immemorial, the devotion of the people of Tanza centered on the Holy Cross of Jesus. It serves as a beacon of hope for the townsfolk and was given the precious name, Mahal na Poong Santa Cruz. Oral tradition provides the story. Fishermen were busy catching fish one day when suddenly they were able to catch a cross adorned with what seemed to be pearls. It was said to be small in height, the size of a cigar box, and over time, it grew until it reached its present height. Deemed to be miraculous, it was housed in a makeshift chapel in Tansakaliwa, where it was frequented by the people. Back then, Tansa was ministered upon by the parish of San Jose de Navotas as one of its chapels or visitas. Because of its fame, people started to realize that the cross should be transferred to an area more accessible to them. And so they started to build a modest chapel in the area of Gasak, where most of the populace live. 
they moved the Santa Cruz to its new home. And from there, the Visita ng Santa Cruz came to be. Soon after, a stone structure was built in place of the old one built from galvanized iron and cogon. This stone edifice is the chapel familiar to the people who live in Tansa until the present. During the Second World War, it was said that the Japanese forces planned to invade the village and take prisoners from the townsfolk. As a way of invoking help from the Almighty, the men of Tansa took the cross in a procession while praying the rosary. When they saw the Japanese, they were frightened, and yet they kept on reciting their prayers. To their surprise, they saw the Japanese going back to the town of Malabon as if they saw nothing. Nevertheless, the Malabon Sugar Factory also became a garrison where men and women were tortured and killed by the Japanese. Another testimony states that one night, a woman woke up from her sleep because of a particular fragrance. She tried to trace where it came from and her feet led her to the visita where she saw the cross glowing emanating a wonderful fragrance. This is the reason why, up until this day, the cross makes a brief stop during its fiesta procession in order to be sprayed with fragrant perfume. When San Roque de Navotas Parish was canonically erected in the year 1951, Pansa became a part of its territory. The ministering priests needed to cross the river by boat in order to reach the chapel and say Mass there. Nevertheless, the popular devotion was so vibrant as it was evident in the groups which sprung up in the community. Among them were the Legion of Mary, Cursillo Movement, and Catholic Christian Discipleship. The Lenten season in Tansa is marked by colorful traditions of popular piety, such as the recitation of the Pasyong Mahal or Pabasa and acts of penitence or penitentia. Those who do the penitentia stop in front of the chapel to pray briefly and ask the Lord for the forgiveness of their sins. People also take part in the Good Friday procession of the Lord's burial, featuring the old images of saints taken care of by the prominent families of Tansa. Every second Saturday of May, the people gather to celebrate the Feast of the Santa Cruz in thanksgiving to the Lord for His many graces through the cross. A nine-day novena precedes this feast, joyfully participated in by the people of Tanza and nearby places. On the eve of the feast, the cross is taken to Tambak Uno, where a fluvial procession or pagoda is done in its honor. This fluvial parade is participated in by the fishermen who help in navigating the direction of the pagoda as it passes through the river. On the feast day itself, the church is full of people who attend Mass and whisper silent prayers of gratitude for the graces they have received. In the evening, the Santa Cruz is carried in a joyful procession, traversing through the main roads of Tansa. The people follow with lighted candles amid the joyful music of the band and colorful fireworks. In 2010, a replica of the Holy Cross was commissioned in order to preserve the original cross found in the sea. This is considered as the official parish image now enthroned in the new church in Sampaguita Street. Because of the increasing need to look after the pastoral needs of the people, the elders of Tanza petitioned the late Jaime Cardinal Sin, then Archbishop of Manila, to separate Tansa from the parish of San Roque in Navotas and to formally establish from it a new parish community under the patronage of the Holy Cross. On February 4, 1990, Cardinal Sin approved their request and established the quasi-parish of Santa Cruz with Reverend Father Martin Guarin as its first pastor. The once small community started to bloom and increase 
and later, on April 28, 1993, Cardinal Sin canonically erected the parish of Santa Cruz in Tanisa, Navotas. The little visita of Santa Cruz became the seat of the parish, with two major chapels and two small chapels, Santo Nino Chapel in Sampaguita Street, Christ the King Chapel in Adelpha Street, Our Lady of Peña Francia Chapel in Bicol area, and Our Lady of Fatima Chapel in Chungkang. Father Guarim, who was its first parish priest, stayed in Tanza for 20 years and is remembered for animating the parish through the Parish Renewal Experience Program, or PREPS. In February 2003, Reverend Father Elpidio Erlano Jr. was appointed the second parish priest of Santa Cruz. It was under his administration that the parish church was renovated, increasing the floor level to address the problem of flooding inside the church and replacing the old altar with a new one, flanked by the icons of Christ Pantocrator, the Crucifixion, and the Angel's Announcement of the Resurrection. He also renovated the Santorino Chapel and spearheaded the construction of the parish convent. He is also remembered for bringing the charism of the neo to the parish community. Later, in October 2009, Reverend Father Ildefonso de Guzman Jr. took over as the third parish priest. Known for his young and joyful attitude, he helped in animating the pastoral council of the parish, and he also established significant groups like the Catholic Women's League and basic ecclesial communities. He is also remembered for spearheading the construction of the parish pastoral building, providing formation programs to the lay leaders of the parish, and giving recognition to the elders who served in the parish since its early days as a visita. In January 2016, Reverend Father Romeo Tuazon was named as the fourth parish priest of Santa Cruz. He was sent to Tanza with the mandate of forming a more vibrant Christian community and to help them build a new and bigger parish church. Up until that time, because of the small land area of the parish church, masses for special occasions were held either at the Santa Nina Chapel in Sampaguita Street or at the bigger streets of Tanza in order to accommodate the huge volume of parishioners. There was an obvious need to build a bigger church capable of holding as many people as possible. With faith in God and generosity of the parishioners and benefactors, the old Santo Nino Chapel was torn down in February 2019 in order to build the proposed parish church. Various fundraising programs and concerts were held, generating a significant amount of money in order to build the church. As the COVID-19 pandemic took place in the year 2020, the parish focused its attention to the needs of those affected by the crisis. The Social Communications Ministry was activated in order to provide live stream masses to those at home who cannot come to church because of the prevailing quarantine status. Likewise, outreach programs were also done to help alleviate the suffering of the poor who were economically affected by the pandemic. Nevertheless, the parish continued the construction of its new church struggling through the pandemic but rising up victorious. It was formally opened to the public on December 13, 2020, just in time for the Simbangabi and Christmas celebrations. On February 22, 2021, two years after the start of its construction, the new parish church of Santa Cruz was solemnly blessed and its altar dedicated by the Bishop of Caloocan, the Most Reverend Pablo Virgilio S. David D.D. It was the fulfillment of the dream of the whole community to have a parish church which is a true dwelling of the Lord in the midst of the people. It also coincided with the fifth centenary of the Christian faith in the country.
During the Mass of Dedication on February 22, 2021, the Diocese of Caloocan proclaimed San Pedro el Pescador as the patron saint of the parish of Santa Cruz. The parish pastoral council chose San Pedro el Pescador, St. Peter the Fisherman, as its patron, since the majority of the people depend on the blessings of the sea. San Pedro is seen as the perfect example of honest work, leadership and service, just as he did when he first followed Jesus on the shore of Galilee up until his martyrdom for Christ. On June 7, 2021, the entire parish community welcomed the relics of the true cross of Jesus and the piece of bone of St. Peter. These relics came from Rome and were given to the parish in order to deepen the devotion of the people to their holy patrons, the Santa Cruz and San Pedro el Pescador. In the parish church, the Feast of San Pedro el Pescador is celebrated every third Sunday of February, while the 14th day of September is celebrated as the titular feast of the parish in honor of the Holy Cross of Jesus. On the other hand, the old church, having been reverted to the status of a chapel, has maintained the traditional feast in honor of the Holy Cross every second Saturday of May. The parish of Santa Cruz is also home to two unique Marian devotions, Stella Maris de Tansa and La Virgen de la Soledad de Navotas. On May 31, 2021, the community enthroned the image of Our Lady Star of the Sea on the right side retablo of the sanctuary. The title Stella Maris is a reference to Mary as the guiding star of seafarers and those whose lives depend on the bounty of the sea as well as of all who traverse through the tough ocean of life in the journey towards the Father. She is considered as the main patroness of the parish. Meanwhile, on November 7, 2021, the parish welcomed the painted image of Our Lady, Nuestra Señora de la Soledad de Navotas, a gift from the devotees of La Virgen de la Soledad de Portavaga in Cavite City. The image is a reminder that even in the sorrowful and troublesome waters of life, Mary is our mother and consoler as she did upon the foot of the cross. The image of Nuestra Señora de la Soledad de Navotas is considered to be the latest addition to the devotion to Our Lady of Solitude in the Philippines. To further address the need of an additional pastor in the increasing population of Tanza, on November 2021, Reverend Father Stefano Mosca, PIME, was assigned to spearhead the establishment of the Pabahay Mission Station located at the socialized housing of Barangay Tanza Dos, placed upon the patronage of Mary, Virgin of the Poor. It is hoped that under his pastoral leadership, the new mission station would likewise flourish and become vibrant as the parish community did 28 years ago. From its curious past, Tanza was able to stand up and make a name of its own. It continues to grow and develop, and yet it never fails to look back to its past as its guiding principle in becoming a progressive community of believers. Guided by the legacy of faith by its forebears, it continues to shape its destiny, not only of being fishermen, but most importantly, of being fishers of men. The graces being obtained from the Holy Cross of Jesus and the intercession of San Pedro el Pescador serve as the inspiration of the people of Tanza in becoming faithful witnesses of Christ and effective bearers of His love to others. Let us continually hold on to this legacy and pass it on to the future generations. Let us be proud of our calling as beacons of Christ's saving love through His cross. Viva Santa Cruz! Viva San Pedro el Pescador!
¡Viva Santa 